let me frame this talk by telling you that I am a product of the radical prostatectomy era. Pat Walsh was a second year resident at UCLA when I was there as an intern. And when he began teaching the world how to do the operation in the early 1980s, I was among his most devoted pupils. But that was then. And during the next few minutes, I'd like to give you my take on a new treatment of prostate cancer, which for many men is preferable to radical prostatectomy. Here are the four rationales that make focal therapy reasonable. First of all, we can localize the disease. As I mentioned in my previous uh, talk, we can find where the lesion is on multiparametric MRI and sample it perfectly. And we can rule out MRI invisible cancers and we can know where cancer is and where it is not within the prostate. Focal therapy has been used quite successfully in other cancers, breast, lung, kidney, colon, et cetera. Partial organ excision is not debated with these cancers. It is the standard. Whole gland treatment, surgery, or radiation, the so-called gold standards, are not uniformly curative and have often have serious side effects. And fourth, Prostate cancer may be multifocal as shown in these three spots here in the prostate, but the lethal element is usually the one clone, which I've shown here in black, which leads to the metastatic disease. This is the monoclonal index theory of origin. I can't recommend highly enough this pioneering article by Hash Ahmed uh, in the New England Journal in 2009. If you wanna read one paper, uh, giving the background on this whole work, uh, that's a good one to read. Um, this, the, the, it, the index origin states that the, uh, the one that's the largest and usually the most, poor, most poorly differentiated is the culprit and that's the one that must be addressed. Focal therapy treatments are currently either approved by the US FDA and available now, or they are under study and may be approved in the not too distant future. Uh, of these four that are possible to use now, I'm going to spend most time addressing focal, ult focused ultrasound, the HIFU procedure and cryotherapy procedures. Um, there's so much energy and activity in this era now that it kind of reminds me of the early part of the 20th century when the automobile industry was new and there was lots of uh, energy, lots of new ideas, uh, lots of different companies, 200 companies making automobiles in the early 1900s. Nobody knew which one would survive and which one uh, uh, would, would uh, go by the, by the wayside. But clearly when this buggy chugged into view, the world had changed and there was no going back. It's hard to tell where we are going exactly uh, in the future, but uh, when the hor horseless carriage came down the street, there was certainly no turning back. In, in doing some history reading about this, I thought it was interesting that the first radical prostatectomy was also done uh, in this year when the automobiles were first coming out, Hugh Young's pioneering operation. Still a good one, but not for everybody. The concerns about focal therapy that have been existing up until very recently have largely been resolved. Previously, patient selection was unclear. Now we know that this is a procedure for intermediate risk men with localized lesions. It was felt previously that undergrading and understaging would be a serious problem. Uh, but these concerns have been largely resolved with the use of MRI guided biopsy, so much better than conventional ultrasound guided biopsy. Uh, we weren't sure whether cancer control would be adequate with focal therapy. Data are now emerging, however, uh, to indicate that at least through five years, yes, it is. And uh, the potential for excessive use uh, um, the, uh, an abuse potential for this being used where it shouldn't be used was concerning, but the FDA and the AUA are both watching this very carefully. Guidelines are being revised and issued, uh, and uh, this has been largely resolved also. So 
So many of the previous concerns are no, no longer there. Uh, let me address the effectiveness issue about focal therapy first. And this is the, some of the best data that I have seen so far. We don't have a randomized trial, but this study from England, which was presented at last year's AUA, provides very convincing evidence uh, that the cancer control of focal therapy confers very favorably with radical prostatectomy. Uh, in this uh, series of men who were what's called, called propensity matched, that's kind of a super matching, um, not a randomized trial, but super matching of men during in, this, in the same centers, red in cryotherapy and HIFU, up here, green in uh, have lap, laparoscopic radical prostatectomies, 246 in each group and followed out for a hundred or more months you can see that the failure-free survival rates plotted here on the vertical axis is just about the same. Failure-free survival, meaning they never got metastases, they never died from prostate cancer, and no other treatment was required. So this is about the same in both groups. I actually don't think this, these data are as helpful, as, uh, are as, as meaningful as biopsy data but they are better than, than nothing. And for intermediate risk prostate cancer, which is what these groups were uh, composed of, failure-free survival was apparently equal. Uh, and um, and uh, the results are about the same in both group, 80, 90% in both groups. So th focal therapy also can fail. It doesn't always eradicate prostate cancer. Let me go through four of the main reasons that this uh, uh, treatment may fail. Um, first is that there is a heat sink effect from blood vessels in and around the prostate, which, which has the effect of dissipating uh, the thermal energy. So that's one mechanism of failure. A second me mechanism of failure is progression of low risk cancers into high risk, uh, uh, higher risk cancers are continued growth. Uh, we've shown that this can, can occur uh, in other publications. Uh, the, the localization uh, process is not always perfect and you can actually miss the cancer uh, if your localization is not good. And, uh, but MRI and targeting biopsy is very helpful for that. And the fourth reason, which brings us to my assignment this morning, is the margin effect. Do we get enough of the cancer to cure it? Cure it? So this is uh, the, uh, the, brings me to my assigned topic of how biopsy cores can be used uh, to help plan focal therapy. So recall lesson number four from the previous talk. Uh, and that is that what you see on MRI in green is not what you may get pathologically in the whole mount uh, section shown here on the left. Uh, yeah, and I mentioned again, the average prostate cancer is 11 millimeters longer and three times the volume of MRI visible lesion. Not only is there a difference in diameter and volume, but the geometry of these lesions can be radically different between what you see on MRI and what you get in the, in the whole mount section. Uh, so, so the fact that the geometry is different makes the utilization of a um, uniform margin around the region of interest an imprecise way to do, uh, to do focal therapy because the tumor may be larger and may grow in finger-like projections in all different directions. If we were to use a uniform margin as shown here on this uh, in the left section here, if we were to use a uniform margin that to get tumors in a reliable way to treat them, to encompass their margins, we would have to go far beyond the region of interest that's visible on the MRI. Uh, this is a study performed by Alan Priester, a biomedical engineer in our department, uh, who looked at 114 carefully processed radical prostatectomies and said that to encompass even uh, 
50% of the tumors that we found, you'd have to go out 13 millimeters beyond the region of interest in every direction. And to get up to about 80% of the tumors, you'd have to go to a, about 20 or 25 millimeters. So this is just not a, 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 a good way uh, to do this. The uniform margins are problematic. So we examined biopsy sites, positive and negative, to devise a shape around MRI visible lesions that could become a treatment guide, encapsulating the tumor and sparing as much normal prostate as possible. Uh, since biopsy sites, as shown here in these rectangles, uh, can be recorded and stored in the fusion device, we re reasoned that a customized treatment plan could be created using the location of positive biopsy cores here negative biopsy cores here, and, and we devised a shape that most often enclosed tumor margins, and that shape was that of a paraboloid. A paraboloid uh, is, is the kind of shape cast by a rainbow or by a satellite dish. Uh, and uh, using the paraboloidal shape, we then looked at a number of uh, of prostates and devised a way to overlay, overlay such a, a shape to encompass the treatment margins. Um, here's an a, a example of a actual uh, of a, a rep replication of a tumor in green, MRI, MRI visible tumor in green, the actual tumor in yellow, in red, and the yellow being the paraboloidal overlay uh, to give us the best chance at uh, ablating that tumor and sparing the maximum amount of uh, prostate tissue based upon uh, positive and negative biopsy cores. For a HIFU treatment plan, we start the process by overlaying uh, the uh, paraboloidal shape over the MRI visible treatment margin. Uh, Next, we add in the biopsy site locations, knowing where the positives and negatives are, and we can use these to uh, contract or expand the treatment margins as we wish. We always contract the treatment margin in the area of the urethra, uh, because early on we found while doing whole gland hyphus during the trial that got hyphu approved, that when you go across the urethra, uh, the complications can become very severe. It's just not worth it. So we take extra measures to avoid, uh, avoid the urethra in any kind of high food procedures. Having done this, the next, the next step is to overlay the paraboloidal shape over the MRI visible lesion in the high food device. Uh, and then in a series of of treatment planes, and this is one of them, showing these skittles or the treatment spots. Um, we, uh, we use this to guide our treatment by. Uh, we've been very successful with this and use this routinely now for, tu for tumors that are like this in the periphery of the prostate. Obviously, if this is in the center of the prostate, it's a different matter and it's gonna be quite difficult. So this is the kind of advantage you get when you have the help of engineers who work, who work with you to develop this. But let me tell you, there is an easier way to do this. You don't need engineers. You don't spare as much normal tissue, but you have great reassurance of getting the margins. And until this paraboloidal method becomes commercialized, you may be better off sticking with hemi gland ablation, which is more or less of a slam dunk. This is a uh, hemi gland ablation using HIFU. Uh, this is six months later, the, uh, the uh, ablation zone seen in the prostate, uh, quite dramatic. Now, let me say a word about cryoablation, which we do a lot of, actually more of, because right now it's being paid for better than with HIFU, although next month, January, a uh, Medicare code will be issued for HIFU, and this will become more and more attractive. But here is a cryoablation procedure, which we per performed recently. Uh, this is a small prostate, about 24 cc's in volume with a Gleason 7 lesion uh, on the right side here in the middle of the prostate. A 
thermal safety probe is performed early in the uh, procedure uh, to protect the rectum. We, this is, goes into the Denon Vies fascia approximately um, and will help us prevent freezing the rectal wall. Two treatment probes are placed. Sometimes we use three, but this is a small prostate. And uh, let me show you, uh, let's see if we can get this. This is uh, a treatment in process. I think you can, can see this. Uh, uh, the um, ice ball is starting to form with the anterior one first, continuing down through the prostate as it as the tissue freezes, it becomes more dense. Ultrasound doesn't penetrate it. It becomes quite dark. It goes down closer to the rectal wall. We follow this visually and by the thermal probe readout to be sure we don't freeze the rectal wall. Uh, we're having about an 80% biopsy success rate, meaning that when we follow these patients as far out as 18 months, um, we're not seeing any more, uh, any more uh, prostate cancer. This is... Uh, an example of an 18 month result. Uh, we have uh, published this work recently. It's in just the past issue of the Journal of Urology. You can see on this side, the uh, damage to that side of the prostate. Again, about 80%, no cancer found when we go back to uh, the sample this, this uh, tissue, when we always do a follow-up biopsy. Just uh, a word about uh, biopsy methods. The, um, we uh, at baseline initially always do systematics and targeted. At six months later, we come back and we just do ipsilateral treatment uh, assessment to be sure that we accomplished our goal of treatment. And we're doing an 18 month biopsy uh, on both sides to, be, to check and see whether we've actually altered the natural history of the disease process. Our results so far indicate that we are. In conclusion then, the pillars of focal therapy make for a compelling argument for why a modern urologist should offer this to appropriate patients. It is by far safer than surgery or radiation. Changes in sexual and urinary function are greatly reduced. It is reasonably effective, offering a potential for cure to many patients. Uh, it uh, Patients want it when they're given a choice, uh, they will select this uh, very often. Um, and it preserves further options, either for retreatment focally or a more aggressive treatment should it be necessary. And the results, uh, for example, with radical prostatectomy done following failed focal therapy are no worse than they are de novo. Here are the main caveats. We must, uh, establish the diagnosis with an MRI guided biopsy. We recommend this for men with mostly T1C lesions, uh, but some with small palpable lesions. Gleason 7 are the appropriate candidates for this, mostly 3 plus 4s, but a few low volume 4 plus 3s as well. PSA should be less than 20. These are the current NCC and guidelines for intermediate risk prostate cancer. We should follow these men as though they are in active surveillance and periodic biopsy, at least until we can be sure that there has been a successful ablation and the natural history has been altered. Uh, biopsy should be the standard method of follow-up. And using MRI guided biopsy, we're finding that about 40 or 50% of all currently diagnosed prostate cancers uh, would be candidates for a form of focal therapy. Uh, and I want to be sure to encourage you to take advantage of the tracking device uh, uh, in these fusion devices. It can be a big help in planning focal therapy. Thanks again to my wonderful support vehicle. Here we are uh, uh, one day uh, earlier this year before everybody had a mask on. Um, these people have all helped me very much and our success has been because of a multidisciplinary approach including just about one of everything that has worked together to form a, a very nice team. Thank you for your attention. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today.